My name is uh, Jason J. Rock Houston, and you're listening to Chaotic Risk Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.chaoticrisk.com. Our special guest tonight is um, Dead Daisy lead guitarist Doug Aldrich. Uh, welcome to the show tonight, Doug. How you doing? J. Rock, what's up, man? I'm doing great. Now I gotta tell you, um, I'm a I'm a um, diehard like a lot of people Dead Daisy fans, and I've just um, the last few days I I've been enjoying um, your new CD, man. And I gotta tell people um, if you're already a fan of the band, you guys are gonna really dig this album. I mean. Um, one thing I gotta tell people, Doug, about this album is, um, with every every uh, CD you guys put out, you just seem to be getting better and better. And, and especially this new CD, "Burn It Down." I mean, what I'll tell people is there it is all killer, no filler. Uh, I think any one of these uh, eleven tracks on here, um, you could release as a single. They they really are all standout songs on their own. So uh, congratulations on the new CD coming out. Uh, thanks so much. I mean, I I just played guitar. It was yeah. Mainly, it came down to uh, John Karabi being um, such a badass. You know, it's really about Karabi. Well, you know, I, 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 you know, it's, it's great you say that because um, I'm a huge fan of his. But I tell you, I think the whole band, um, when the whole band gets together, that's what makes the music so great. Is everybody coming in and um, putting their influence into the into what you guys do? And I gotta say, Doug, I, while I know that you and um, you and Karabi are not original members of the band, I think, um, especially on the last two albums that, that you played on. I know that you're very much like John involved with the songwriting and you guys have really kind of um, put your stamp all over these songs so you know way to go well thanks man we, we've had we've had a really good time working together uh, it's been a t t two years plus now and um, now we're on the, the second studio record and and we I feel like we we're definitely more focused on this one it's called burn it down and uh, hopefully um, People will get a chance to check it out, and uh, it comes out April six. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And you know, I got, t I got. Um, for, before we get into talking really um, in detail about the new album, I, I got to ask you because um, last time, last year, I talked to John um, when you guys put out that great live album, Live and Louder, and he was um, telling me that you, um, you were the one guy that was really involved with like mixing. And I got to tell you, Doug, um, great job there because you know it's kind of interesting. Um, I put that live album up with a lot of the great al live albums of all time. Like I I'd say, you, it's um, right up there with Cheap Trick, Live at Budokan, Kiss Alive, you know, Frampton Comes Alive. So, um, and, and it, what, what really amazed me about it, um, it really sounded like a really cohesive album, even though the, each each um, each track was taken like from different shows. Um, so, way to go there. Well, that was that was actually I will give credit where it's due, which is our um, our front of house engineer Tommy D. He he. I've never heard tracks that were more consistent. And what happens so that you know people understand is when you mic up a guitar cabinet, if you move the mic, you know, an inch either direction, the, the guitar sound changes, and it's it's kind of like every song you'd have to start fresh with a different EQ to make it so, sound cohesive. But all the the tones on the the whole tour were really, really um, very, this, you know. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Samey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, just, it, like it was very consistent. It was very yeah. consistent. So, I, I mean, it was very easy to just pick the best shows with the, with the audience that was going to create, you know, going crazy. And, and it, it was, it was, at first we were going to just stay with London or Paris. Those yeah. were two really, really great shows. But then we decided, you know what, let's kind of mix it up and let's kind of represent that whole European thing that we did and so that's what you got and so i didn't do that much on it i just um i kind of listened to through the tracks and wherever the, the audience was the loudest yeah, those yeah. were kind of the ones that i that i you know picked yeah because you know was, to, was, to, to, again to the trained air you know it um it sounds like you said very consistent if you didn't know any better um you, you'd think that it was maybe felt um you know all taped at the same show so and, and the other thing i loved about live and louder is um is while you did not just um, you know get a great sounding live album with of all the um, you know classic Daisy stuff, you threw in um, you threw in a couple of little extra uh, you know things for the fans like with We're an American Band and um, and obviously Helter Skelter. Talk a little bit about the band's decision to do that. Well, the band, you know, when we're making a studio record, it's it's a snapshot of time yeah. and it's about the music. And um, but when we go play live, it's really about the event and about us connecting with the fans and and it's a little bit different you know you, when you when you're doing a record you're focusing on that that music at the time yeah yeah but uh live and louder kind of was a, a grabbing a snapshot of 
what it's like to go to a Daisy show, which is it's really more 3D. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. you really people are singing along. They're they're you know John is John's one of the best frontmen. I've one of the best frontmen I've ever worked with, and I've worked with a lot of great guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, Dio, Dio to Coverdale <laughs> to David David Coverdale, mm-hmm. and and even with Dean Castronovo. Um, I, I'm really lucky with that, but John is by is by and large he's the most down to earth guy I've ever met. He's a rock star, but he's just super cool. And so the Daisy show is basically like a party at John's house. That's really what it feels like. Yeah, and like and I said, I have no problem. Go on. I'm sorry. Well, I was just gonna say I I had no problem say, saying that you know it's like John's the leader. You know he's the front he's the front man. He him and. Uh, and David are the leaders of the band, and and I have a lot of fun playing with those guys, man. It's awesome. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny you say it because I've, I've been a huge Karabi fan for years. I mean, um, like a lot of people, first time I ever heard um, the name John Karabi was on that 94 um, Motley Crue album. And, um, you know, I think he's um, finally getting the credit he deserves. I mean, the Dead Daisies, I think, it's a perfect vehicle for him and it, as well as everybody in the band. And, you know, and it's kind of interesting because... The Daisies didn't really start um, getting big in America until he joined up with the band. So I think there's a lot of truth to what you're saying there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome, man. He's, he's, he's you know, as, as, as much as Ronnie James Dio commanded the stage, yeah. David Coverdale commands the stage, Karabi commands a stage in a different way that's, yeah. that's really genuine and down to earth. And um, people love it, you know? So that's what we wanted to try and capture on Live and Louder. And now... You know, and we, we 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 toured off of "Make Some Noise," the yeah. last studio record, and and "Live and Louder." We did we did as much as we could, but we really wanted to get some new music going. So that's the end of last year. We got together and we put to, we wrote a bunch of songs and we put together a record. So um, we're really excited about playing new songs. We we are um, today was first rehearsal, and we're going. We're basically learning the entire album wow, wow. We're rehearsing it and we're gonna see you know which songs kind of stick out as being the best but definitely rise up um is, is definitely going to be one and um resurrected is feels awesome yeah to play yeah and you the know title, title track burn it burn it down is great so yeah those are my like um three of my top uh, tracks right off that, that you mentioned there and you know getting back to Krabi, um a good example of what you're saying if anybody has seen that um music video you guys did for a song um, Join Together I mean you just you can just see the way that guy commands the, you know the audience it's just amazing it's really amazing because he does it in, a, in such a, a subtle cool way you know it's like it's just natural what uh, he that's why I say yeah. if, if, if you come yeah if you come to a Daisy show it really is it's like a party at John it's just that's, that's the best way I can describe it it's a party at John's house and he's gonna tell some jokes He's going to sing his ass off, and he really connects with the fans. Yeah, and I think the whole band, you know, Karabi, along with the rest of the rest of you guys, um, as Judas Priest would say, um, you know, you guys really deliver the goods there um, with everything. So, um, like I said, um, I can't say enough great things. You guys are one of my favorite um, bands in the last couple of years, and I think for a simple fact, the reason, um, you know, is like you, like you said, you guys have just been touring crazy the last couple couple of years and you're all and we're already getting new music i mean I, I mean a lot of bands these days they, they take three four years off between albums so you know the, the fans are just getting getting a lot of stuff from you guys which is great you know it's yeah it, it's good it's good to keep it fresh you know it don't i i feel like a new band needs to keep pumping out stuff because people can listen to it for a while and then they then they kind of you know they want to move on to something else and yeah, yeah. keep giving them something fresh and new and, and up in the game. You know, we, we really wanted to up the game with this this record. Um, Make Some Noise did really well for mm-hmm. us and um, we we're really proud of it, but I think we're more focused now on, on Burn It Down. We Songs like, you know, Rise Up, it's, it's basically like Rise Up against, you know, things that are keeping yeah. you keeping you down or holding you back. Same with burn it down. If there's something holding holding you back, burn it down and rise up. Yeah, yeah, and wow. Then you're res- yeah. Then, you're, then you're resurrected and you're free. And that's that's all. That's the whole theme of the record that that John Karabi and Marty Fredrickson put together. And, and I imagine, Doug, this time being your second out, you know, second studio album with the band, 
um, as opposed to when you went in to make um, you know make some noise. Um, you, you've been with the band and, and you know the other guys a lot um, better, and it, it's um, you're not so much um, which you're not anymore. Obviously, um, feeling like the new guy, you, you uh, feel like a little more. Hey, this is my band. You know, I've been here for um, a while. You know, I'm feeling a little more comfortable with what I'm doing. Well, it's not my band. It's it's. You know, it's David Lloyd's and John Carabi's. Well, when I say your band, you know, that you, you play in that band. That's but, but the thing is, yeah. is, is that I really, I really enjoy playing with these guys. Yeah. They're all buddies of mine. Now Dean Castronovo is the new guy. He's yeah. the new yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, that's, so that's the point, yeah. I, I'm I was, kind of a, I'm a veteran now. Yeah, you, there you go. That's Marco, way. Yeah, Marco Mendoza and Dean together is, uh, today was the first day actually playing with those two together. Wow, wow. And they're, in, they're insane. It's, it's really cool. And, and I got to ask, how shocked were you when um, Brian Tishy, who's um, one of all-time great drummers, I think, um, when he when he announced to you guys that he was um, leaving, were you at all surprised? It was, you know, Brian's one of my best friends, and I and I knew that that Brian wanted to accomplish some other things, but I didn't know that that he, I didn't know what was going to transpire between him and management, and they were they were straight up with each other, and Brian said, "Look, I really." have a lot of things that I, I need to try and accomplish in 2018 and I'm not sure that you know unless I'm not sure I can commit to the whole year yeah yeah and so that that Daisy was very honest management said well we really you know it, whoever is gonna record the record needs to tour so yeah, yeah, yeah. if you don't if you, if you can't commit to the to the whole tour then we, we you know it probably should Look at other options, yeah, and, yeah. and they both they both mutually agreed, amicably agreed to do that, and and um and then Dean came in, wow, wow, and and you know I I don't compare those two guys because they're they're different guys, they're different, different animals, players. yeah, two different, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I I love them both. They're both amazing musicians. Um, Brian is a um, he, he's just he's He's a fanatic on drugs. He's just unbelievable. Um, and Dean is equally, in a different way, he's unbelievable. Uh, and he also sings his ass off it. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard Dean, Dean sing, but he is, he's, he's definitely going to bring a new element to the Dead Daisies with his background vocals. Yeah, that, that's, that's uh, you know, amazing. And one thing, um, I, I know Brian, um, Brian Tishy, I know he's quite busy with his... Um, Bonzo Bash and his Randy Rose Remembered events that he puts on every year, so that's probably taken up a lot of his um, time. But he, he's also quite talented in the sense that, um, besides, while well, people mo mostly know him as a drummer, yeah, I know he plays guitar in that as well. You know, because Brian is one of those guys that is super talented. He's he's extremely intelligent, and he needs to push his, himself to, to be happy. And, yeah, yeah. And, so, so he would always carry a, a guitar with him on the road, and we'd be jamming. And I miss that man because I, you know, Brian, <laughs> he would like, he, he, you know, I have my own thing that I do. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I do. But Brian would push me. He would be like, "Dude, check this out, man. Check out this lick." And I'm like, yeah. "You've been listening. To, you've been listening to Ingve. What, what's going yeah, on?" Yeah, yeah. And, and then wow. he would, you know, he would he would push me, and it was really cool. I love Brian. Brian's a Berkeley guy, and Brian can basically listen to a song okay. two or three times, write it down, and he'll be able to play it perfectly. Wow. He's, he's a freak. Yeah, yeah. And, he's, he's unbelievable. And the other guy he's got it. He's definitely more yeah. of a steel guy, yeah, yeah. and um, and he's he's an amazing drummer. Uh, you know, his time with Journey was... Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, you know, he, he, he owned that band, really. Um, but he, he wanted to take some... He needed to take some time off to get off the road and stay home and kind yeah, of, yeah. you know, regroup. And so that's what he did. And, and then we were lucky enough to, to grab him, you know, when Brian, when well, Brian uh, uh, left. Well, decided to cut out. Yeah. Well, more power to everybody. But let me ask you, but one guy I want to ask about that seems like really, you know, like you said, it's his band and he's like the only original member left in the band. Um, but he's, uh, D David uh, Lowy, the, the, uh, your co-guitar partner, um, he seems like a real low-key guy. What's he like to work with? He's awesome. He's, he, he's, he's a great dude. You know, he, he is, uh, he started the band because he wrote some songs with, with a singer in Australia and they, it, they had a good vibe and they decided to make a band and so the Dead Daisies was formed. But it wasn't until I think, you know, really, 
I think it was really about the time when, when Dizzy and Richard Fortas and Marco, John Carabi, yeah, and, and David, that was like, and Brian, that was like a solid lineup. And that was, that was when the band kind of started. Then Mark, for me, Mark, that's Mark one. Mark two would be me and Brian and Marco and John and David. And yeah. now we're at Mark three with, with Dean. Yeah, but that's kind of interesting to, because I, I know, like you said, the, the band was initially based out of, um, you know, Europe and Australia, and that's where the band's label's out of it. And it wasn't until, um, you know, Krabi and, and, and Brian hooked up with the guys that the Dead Daisies even really started to break out in America, which I think is um, kind of a cool thing. It's like been a, uh, uh, kind of a, a, a great progression because, I mean, even looking at that uh, DVD, you guys included with Live and Louder, I mean, it seems like everywhere you went on that European tour, it was almost like Beatlemania. You, you get bigger and bigger and bigger. It, just the love was there, you know? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And I'll tell you a funny story about that, too. Was that um, when, I, when I met John Carabi when we were kids, oh, wow. we, he used to play in the, in the clubs in New Jersey, actually. We were, living in, we were both living in the Philadelphia area. And John... Um, used to play in a band and they would do a, they did a cover of Midnight Moses wow. in that band and, oh, wow. and I thought it was a it was a great cover and when John joined the band I heard about it he joined the band and then they they put out a video for Midnight Moses and it was an amazing video and a great way that they covered the song and I thought how cool is that that Karabi after all these years he pulled out that song and, and did a cover of it now, well, let me let me ask yeah, you on no. that, Doug. I ne I was never aware of it. Um, like um, a lot of people, I, I guess I foolishly believe that that was a Dead Daisies um, original. Um, educate me if you, here if you can. Do you know who did the original version of it? Uh, the Alex Harvey band did oh. the original version. Oh, I have to check that out because um, you know I was having an online chat with um, Jimmy Coons, the guitar player from, um, I mean the the singer from Cactus, uh, talking about a, another uh, great cover. Um, from Ronnie Macho's Twenty Flight Rock, and then he educated me. Hey, that's actually an Eddie Cochran tune. You know, he's telling me you kind of got to when you're checking out a cover tune, go back and uh, check out the original, see where the song originated from. That's right. Yeah, you got to do that. You know, it's, it's important to do that. Yeah. But I mean, the thing about that uh, Midnight Moses is, is that it was um, kind of a, a sleeper song, and not, not many people knew about yeah, it. Yeah. So when the yeah. Dead Daisies did it, it, it made it kind of a uh, it it really put it into the spotlight. You yeah, know, which yeah, is, which yeah. Is cool. It kind of reminds me like when Tessa um, put out that that great version of uh, like we made right uh, signs, and, and they they kind of like um, everybody knows that song now because of Tesla, but it was actually the Five Man Electrical Band years. I think around 1971 that put that song out and so Tesla actually um, had a hit with it which I understand was even bigger than the original um, version but you know like you said they, that's another example of them uh, of a band really rocking a tune up and making it their own yep yeah yep absolutely and now yep. Doug um, I want to get a little bit of a new album obviously Burn It, Burn it Down um, now I was reading on your guys' Facebook page um, um, that bur the title track Burn It Down was used at a recent uh NASCAR event, I think, just about a week ago. Talk a little bit about how that all took place. Well, that was, um, yeah, we, we, we hired, you know, we, we, because Make Some Noise was used for some, some sporting events. Yeah, yeah. So we hired, we hired a sports agent to, to shop and, and kind of um, see if there was any interest in some of the songs off the new record. Mm -hmm. and, and Rise Up turned out to be uh, really perfect for NASCAR and also some other sports but but initially NASCAR really loved it and so they they used it for to, to promote the Fontana race last week and uh, also Joe Gibbs Racing is going to actually sign on to use that song to promote their driver Eric Jones who's a brand new he was a rookie of the year last year on NASCAR and he's you know brand new up and coming driver and just amazing you know he's really really great kid yeah, uh, you know how how cool is that? I mean, um, like like you said earlier, I know that make some noise with you at some major baseball um, events. So that that's great. You guys are also um, being recognized by the sports world as well. Absolutely, man. It's you know it's it's kind of a, a really great way to cross over. Um, there's you know the music industry has changed so much 
Yeah. You really need to kind of adapt and, and try new tactics and to get your, your band out there. And one of the ways to do it is, is to try and, you know, attach to cross over into other areas like sports. So that's what we're doing. And you know what I love Trying about to, and what I love about that, Doug, is I mean uh, a great example is that for years you would go you, you'd go to sporting events like in stadiums and you and you know classic stuff you'd hear like would be like Queens We Will Rock You or you know even We Are the Champions and now you you guys are kind of giving those um, classic um, you know anth- uh, sports anthems a run for their money you know it's give get us a chance to hear some new stuff so that's really great I think yeah you know I mean as much as I love some of those old songs they've just been done so much that's what I mean it's time for something new you know and fresh and yeah. I think. The yeah, Dead Daisies is is um, at the right place at the right. T- now you guys always like I uh, mentioned at the top of the interview. You do a great job of picking um, a great songs to cover. And I got to say um, on the new album, well, well, bitch for for example, I think that's a great song to cover just for the simple fact that not only is it a Rolling Stones tune, but um, the fact that you guys chose such kind of a, a a different track. Like you might somebody doing a Stones cover, you might expect them to cover Satisfaction or honky talk woman and that's kind of um one you wouldn't expect and um and when people are listening to the track bitch they might uh, they might actually unless they read the writing credits on the um album might think that's a new um dead daisies tune so so that's it talk a little bit about your guys um choice to cover that well we that you you're absolutely right a lot of people didn't know that was a cover because they just didn't um haven't heard it before a million really, times on the radio you know yeah, they had, they were, yeah so we you know, we were looking at songs that we wanted to try and do, and um, it was a suggestion that management threw out there, and, and we basically, would any we had a lot of different songs we tried, yeah. we played through, and Bitch just was the one where it felt really natural for us, and, and John John just nailed it, he did such a cool job on it, so yeah, and, and it was... Then, uh, uh, it's really cool. And the, obviously, the other cover was the last track on the CD, Revolution. And what I love about that is not is that not only is that another track that really fits the Dead Daisies and fits John's voice, but um, the, the kind of odd thing is that people that um, may not realize the very first um, Dead Daisies album that, that Krabi was featured on was called Revolution. And so people might think that's something off of that, but this is actually a cover of a classic um, Beatles tune. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so it, it's, you know, timely with yeah. everything that's going on in the world. Exactly. That's why I think it's really fitting with it, uh, everything know. going on in the world today, politically and everything. I, I think it's a perfect choice of a song to cover. And, and um, well, I don't, it's, like, yeah. it's like, it's like, you know, whether you're a, a Democrat or Republican, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's like, we need to settle down. Yeah, yeah. And I, for me, what, it, what that re- represents is, is let's let's start a revolution to, to settle down and yeah. fix this fix these things up and uh, uh, hopefully that will you know at some point that will happen and we're still we're still in the midst of, um, of all kinds of yeah. scandal and all kinds of different stuff and it's just you know I mean um, yeah that's people yeah. Are, yeah that's why I love a band like the Dead Daisy so I'll give you a great example of what you're talking about um, a lot of people for example this year tuned out from watching the Oscars because. There's just too much of this, um, you know, political um, PC stuff going on where people get on stage and they're scolding people. Well, I think this way, and unless you think like I do, you're you're an awful person. And I'm like, I remember when I was growing up, I'd watch the Oscars. It was more about entertainment, about people getting up on stage and singing and dancing. I'm like, you know, what what happened to the entertainment? You know. Well, I agree with you. I, you know, people, we we were just. We, we, we like the song Revolution, so we wanted to do it, but it's timely in a sense, and John John's very passionate about what, what he believes. Yeah. Everyone's got their own their own opinion, and they may differ, you know? Yeah. Opinions always differ. Um, with, the, with the stuff like, like the Oscars, you know, man, I, I gotta say, I'm not looking to... Um, Change the world to an actor to, yeah. to, yeah, to influence me in, in my belief. I'm yeah. looking to them to entertain me. That's their job. Yeah. That's why I pay money is so they can entertain me. Now, I don't want to know about their political idea. Yeah. You know, if they want to run for office, then go ahead. But when you the Oscars is about awards for for a movie yeah. effort. You know, yeah. my biggest my my happiest moment of the Oscars was Kobe Bryant won an Oscar. Yeah, that I mean, how cool yeah. is that? Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. That's 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 the best because you know, as uh, Jimmy Kimmel said, he's he's won more Oscars than Shaq and, and Michael <laughs> Jordan combined. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That's kind of, that's kind of funny. Yeah, and you know, getting getting back to, I don't want people to be under the idea that you know. The Dead Daisies just put out like great cover tunes, although that's something you guys are known for. Because um, what I'll tell anybody is when you get this new um, CD, Burn It Down, um, I would I would tell people that the other nine tracks, are, which are all are original um, Dead Daisy tunes, they're all just as great as the two cover tunes. Um, and, and that's what I really dig about this. You guys put out, like I said, each time you put out a new CD, it's better than the one that came before. And so you guys, you guys just really keep progressing, and I think um, you're on the upswing. Here. Well, my favorite song on the record is probably, and because it changes, um, at first, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the song Rise Up is getting a lot of attention, yeah. and it wasn't my favorite song at all, I, I kind of, that was a riff that I was just, I just threw it out there, and everyone's, I was kind of like, I did, I, I did, wasn't really serious about yeah. it, and everyone go, oh, I really love that, and I was like, oh, and that's not, it's not that special, you know, but the chorus when it hits with the way John sings yeah. really made it special I mean, and I really like it but my yeah. favorite song is um, a song called you, it's, it's kind of buried on the record it's at the end which I was surprised but it's called You Can't Take It With You and that song is, is for me the funnest track I love it I really love that track yeah, and what, what do you love about it I mean like I said it, it's a great track I, I totally agree it, it starts off it's just because it's it starts out with this like aggressive attack uh, yeah. guitar riff, and um, and then it's got a it's got a very Krabi Crew esque yeah, chorus. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me of, of something that could have been on uh, a Motley Crue record with John. Yeah, and you know the, all these tunes. I say um, it, it's a pretty heavy record. I mean, um, I, I would say probably the closest thing you even have to a ballad would be "Set Me Free," but then that's one of those songs that kind of starts. Off kind of soft and it progresses um but but that's a that's a great tune and and what i loved about the title track burn it down i, I love that thump and bass in there yeah me too i really do yeah. it's um uh, it's that's that's gonna be it's definitely gonna be played live we're we're, we're going through everything we're gonna find which songs we yeah. like the best and somehow we'll we'll narrow it down to pr probably five or six off the new record yeah. and then five or six old songs and then a couple covers and we'll that, and you know yeah our set. and you know like like you mentioned the song rise up that's one of the, that's one of the tunes too that like you said i i dug it but it's kind of it's every time i hear it it's really grown on me more and, and more and and like as far as um anthems i think like like you got make some noise you got rise up resurrected you um, even we're an american band i think you know those are all very um great anth anthem type uh, rockers and um you could really get the crowd going to them and uh, even join together. I really, that's another one you guys do that I really love. Um, and I, I got to ask, like, um, we got a lyric video, I know, for um, Rise Up, but have you guys thought about um, releasing, like, an actual music video for any of the tracks yet? Yeah, they're, they're, they're working on, uh, we, we, we took a bunch of footage at NASCAR, and we're going to do some more stuff next week oh, cool, down in North cool. Carolina at uh, Charlotte Raceway. And, um, uh, they'll, they're going to put something together. I mean, you know, the cool thing now is you can have like three or four different videos for a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that, that, that all, you know, kind of tie in in different ways. So, yeah, people will have a, a video. By the time the record's out, there'll be a video as well. Yeah, and, um, yeah. and and then we're going to also do, uh, we're gonna, we've are gonna we got plans to do a couple other videos as well for the record. So, yeah, because you know the, the thing about the so, a, a, a lot of bands these days they don't even bother putting out um, music videos. I mean, MTV is not what it once was, and they think, oh, nobody's going to watch our music videos. But I, I mean, the Dead Daisies is a great example that I know you guys um, about a year ago you hit you like you had a big uh, number on uh, YouTube, and so the, the Dead Daisies people are still checking out yeah, their music yeah. videos. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's uh, yep. Um. Well, just um, that, there's, that's, uh, yeah. there's there's uh, a, a bunch of songs that Dead Daisies you know had put out there that that have really catapulted the band and um, so now it's it's like really as you say now we can we can kind of rely more on the on the uh, the new music you know yeah and you guys got like a, you guys got a huge fan base I mean let's I mean to me um, I know you guys were um, part of a Kiss tour last year I know you went played on the um, 
Kiss crews, but I think with Dead to 80s fans are very much like the Kiss fans. They, they are diehard. Um, and so um, I think that's just a testament to your guys' as talent as a, as a band. Because like I said, a lot of bands, they don't even release new music. They just live off the catalog of music they have because they're like, CDs aren't selling. That's why I dig a band like you guys. You continue to put out great new music. And a lot of bands aren't doing that these days. Well, thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate all your support, and uh, and we are, you know, we're, we're definitely looking forward to um, playing. We're going to be playing in LA at the end of, uh, I think it's September. And you know so where you're playing? Do you know, you know where you're playing at? What will be like at the Whiskey? Do you know or downtown there? Actually, actually, I don't know, Jason. It's. Um, well, I'll just follow you guys. It's, it's still, yeah. Go, everyone can go to deaddaisies.com and, and see where we're going. We're starting mm -hmm. off in Europe in about two weeks. Wow, wow. And, or a week and a, week and a half. And we go to South America, we do the U.S., we go to Japan, mm -hmm. we're going to, back to Europe. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff going on, so please check out deaddaisies.com mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and uh, yeah. we'll, see you, we'll see you soon. And I know you're it's getting late where you are, Doug, so we'll get ready to wrap this up. Before we do, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, because as I mentioned, I'm also a huge KISS fan. I don't know if this is true, but I've read, I've read several things over the years that, that um, is it true that you actually at one point auditioned for KISS? Is that is that an actual thing, or is that just a story? No, that's true. I was asked to audition for KISS by Eric Carr. Oh, he, wow. He, uh, he, he saw me play and he asked me to come audition for the band and and I, I checked it out and, and uh, played with them a few, we, we had three different auditions. One was in the studio recording and then two times jamming live. But in the end, I, and I knew it, man, I, I was just too young. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It was not, and, and at that time I, I really, I think I, I think I really, you know, Kiss was was not my band so much. Yeah, yeah. More, you know, I was I was into more stuff like like Ozzy and Zeppelin. I mean, Ozzy and Zeppelin, Sabbath. Okay, okay. A heavier stuff. Okay. But yeah. I thought, it, you know, I thought it was a, it was a, it was a really honor to to meet those guys and play with them. Okay, and but the, yeah, the but, bottom line was I was just too I was too young. Yeah. I was too young for that. And and, and look at that the crew you've had since then, but. Um, but the very last thing I want to ask you, as far as um, when you were coming up, I mean, um, who were kind of the guitar players that influenced you to do what you're doing these days? Started off with Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, wow. Eric Clapton, wow. Jimi Hendrix, Richie Blackmore, oh, wow. uh, Gary Gary Moore, Michael Senker, Manny Rhodes, Eddie Van Halen, Pat Travers, Alex mm -hmm. Lyson. Um, Can't go wrong with any it, of those guys. Up, yeah. It, it, it went on and on. David Gilmore, the Allman Brothers, Dwayne Allman. Wow, wow. Uh, and Dickie Betts. Um, and Skinner, all those guys. Um, there's so much. Aerosmith, Joe Perry, Brad Whitford. Um, but I would say, if, if I had to pick one guy that I love the most, even though I don't play like him, but, uh -huh. you know, I love, I love, I love him as Jane Page. Oh, wow, wow. There you go, there you go. That's, that's pretty good. And um, Richie Blackmore, I don't think you can go wrong there. Um, I was curious, as far as Richie goes, have you had a chance to hear the stuff that he's been doing with his wife the last few years, um, Blackmore's Night? Uh, yeah, I like it. It's pretty it's really, cool. It's pretty I cool. Like it. I like it a lot. I mean, it's, it's not like a Deep Purple Rainbow. In fact, um, I'm going to end on this, um, Doug, uh, since you're a Richie fan. I don't know if you're aware, but um, I think the same day that your guys' CD comes out... Um, there's a new live um, Rainbow uh, DVD and CD coming out, and they've got a couple of new tunes on there. The guy he's got singing with him now, um, if you close your eyes, you'd swear it was Ronnie James Dio. So that's something you might want to check out. I know him. I know Ronnie. He's really, Ronnie Romero. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's awesome. Well, um, Great Doug. Guy and, uh, cool. like, you know, yeah. I'll definitely check it out. Like I said, Doug, um, I want to thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. The um, interview will probably be going up um, sometime in april maybe may i'll let chip know once it gets posted but um please keep in touch anytime you um like to do this again uh, feel free to reach out to me and like i'd like to thank chip uh for sending this up so um take care of yourself and uh, best of luck to you and the band on the new cd because it's just a great rocking cd and I, I really urge people to go out and get it on april 6th thanks brother i really appreciate your help jason and uh all the best to your fans and uh rocks on the one thank you okay thanks thank you bye bye <laughs> All right, see you, man. Bye.